Greetings and welcome to another excellent World of Tanks video. Now, I was just uploading a classic shorty. And it occurred to me that since that classic shorty was about long hauls, I would make a video explaining what the long haul is to people who don't know what it is. You, you know, it's one of those things, you do something so long, you just assume that everybody knows what it is. But clearly, that's not the case. So, I don't know how many people are going to discover this video and then, you know, get the epiphany of, oh, long hauls are killer. But long hauls are killer. So, we're going to cover the stuff. It's really not very difficult. It's pretty basic stuff. Fun for, you know, all ages, as they say, especially if you're, you know, you have kids that are working on this might be helpful to them as well, because it gives you a motivation to practice your game. So before we go any further, it would be helpful if you could leave a like for this video that would help spread the word to other players who haven't seen it. And the more people that know about long hauls, the better. So, the long haul operation is pretty basic stuff. You play matches, and every time you finish a match, you finish from place 1 to 15. And if you finish top 7 on your team, you'll get a point for a long haul. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. It doesn't matter if you kill no guys or 10 guys. You get one point for that. It's really basic. So, you play these games, you accrue these points, and when you hit the number of 75, cha-chingalinga, you're going to get a free war chest. No strings attached. You don't have to sign up for it. You just play the games and they show up. I know it sounds too good to be true, but it is. That's how I discovered those years ago, and I was like, man, where am I getting these things from? Back then it was cards, but it's the same difference. And I'm going to show you, you know, a typical-ish match from a long haul. Actually, I'm going to show you the final match that I played to get a long haul. I'm not going to go through the whole match. It's kind of boring, but I'm going to show you the results so you can see what it's like when you're doing long hauls. So let's go check that out. Now, it doesn't matter. You can play anything you want. There is only one restriction. It has to be tier three or higher, including Cold War if you want to play Cold Wars. So tiers one and two do not count. Other than that, fair game, rock and roll, do whatever floats your boat. The one I did was in artillery, and I'll explain that to you there's a specific reason why I chose artillery, which will appeal to some of you, but not all of you. So, let's go check it out. We're going to look at this game here at Severogorsk. Now, why are we looking at this game of, at Severogorsk? Well, like I told you, this was number 75. And I qualified, which is really the only thing that matters. Now, how you qualify, we're going to cover that. It's pretty basic stuff. Now, the reason I chose artillery is because one of the things, one of the recommendations is play something that you're good at. I'm very good at artillery, so check on that one. Play something that you can finish matches generally in the five minute range average. Check on that one for me. Uh, as a top notch artillery player, I have games sometimes go much shorter. If I have a good team, I've had games go three and a three and three and a half minutes. Bing, bang, boom, artillery scoring and what have you. It's all good. Play something that's easy for you. Easy in the context of, you know, I'm like Captain America. I can do this all day. I don't, but I could if I'm under, you know, pressure to do whatever. So that's the thing there. That's what's easy for me. It's it's just not complicated for my mind because my mind is set to artillery focus. 
and it's a it's a breeze. Now I'm also really good at light tanks, and I do those for long hauls as well when I feel like it. But you can do anything, medium, heavy, whatever you're good at. That's what I would consider and concentrate on. Because the better you are at this thing, the more points you're going to score. The more points you're going to score, the higher the chances are you finish top seven. You don't get a bonus for being number one, and you don't lose anything for being number seven. One through seven, they all count the same. You know you do your best, but hey, you're not going to have a great game every time. Some other guy's going to be better than you here and there, or vice versa. So it's all good. We do this together as a collective team effort. Sometimes, you know, three men in a platoon. It doesn't matter who's, who finishes the, the top guy of that platoon game. We couldn't care less. You got MVP? Fantastic. We won. <laughs> That's a bonus to us. <laughs> we're like, okay, we're just trying to, you know, hey, if we end up five, six, and seven on our team, oh, well, it could have been worse. So it's, you know, it's not crazy. You can make it crazy, but there's no reason to do so. Now let's check this out. The medals don't matter. We'll just look at it just for the heck of it. So this is a Stark medal. I got this for killing two guys by driving around in artillery. Bruiser knocking out opponents' crews and or modules. Fighter killing four or five vehicles. If I killed six, you get a top gun. Okay, so that blue metal ribbon means you killed four or five, depending. Duelist, I killed two guys that damaged me. And I got a third class badge. Now, scoreboard. Well, you look at here. My team won. Hooray for us. Uh, PlayStation guy here scored MVP. Fantastic job for him. You know, he killed four guys, as you can see, for almost 1,300 damage. A really fine game. I'm in artillery. I was number two overall, also killing four guys, and, you know, just, you know, about, what, 84 points damage less than him. I was right there. It's all good. But he's in a Panzer 1C, which is a tech tree tank, which gets a bonus over my tank because my tank is a premium tank. So that will help you. Tech tree tanks, if you're able to score and make money, what have you. Those are really great because you're going to get a bonus like this one. So that's the deal with that. So top seven. So look at that. I'm number two. This guy, YT, whatever the heck his name is, number three, he, he counts. This is a person also, pork belly. Now the rest of these guys are robots. They don't count. They count if you finished after them. It's not top seven people. But there's only four people in this match and all four of them earned a long haul. So great. We all got a point for that. Hooray. The other team. Robot. 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 Human. He got a point. Human. PlayStation. He got a point. Everybody else doesn't matter. Robot. 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 Human. Etc. Etc. So. Yeah. And there's the last person down there. Hit their artillery didn't do very well. So. I don't say do artillery because you'll automatically do well. That's not true. I'm an ace artillery guy, and that guy had a bad game one way or the other. I didn't pay attention. I don't know if our guys killed him or if he just couldn't get any damage because that happens to artillery sometimes. I don't know. Do what works for you, not what works for somebody else necessarily. Simple stuff. Okay. For those of you that somehow may not know what war chests are. War chests are prizes that you get. And you're going to get random stuff in a prize. Now, the top war chest you can get is a five-star general. The second best you can get is a three-stripe sergeant. And the lowest one, but believe me, it doesn't make it always bad, is the one-stripe private. So you do your long hauls to earn one of these randomly. Now, most of the time, Bernie says it's about 85% uh, privates. But that's 15% or something else. Now, let me tell you, it happens that we never know when you're going to get a sergeant or a general's chest. 
There's no rhyme or reason. It's just random. You take what you get, and you might get a you might get the lowest possible prize for each in each one of those chests. The lowest possible prize is different. The private chest is 150 gold. The sergeant's chest is 275 gold. The general's chest is 425 gold. So this is why the general chest is the best one because the worst case scenario you're going to pull 425 gold out of that chest every time sometimes more sometimes a lot more so you do your you do your missions you you catch that long haul chest and you get what you get i'm going to show you the one that i got today because it'll make it more interesting and help you see exactly how the process works you get those bing bang boom you open it up cross your fingers anything can happen because not only do you get gold in every war chest 10 percent of the time you'll get a premium tank now the, the payouts of premium tanks changes every season so we're not going to go into the minutiae of that. If you get a war chest and you get a free premium tank, well, it's pretty basic stuff. And this is where it gets fun. You get to keep that tank. You'll also get the minimum gold for that chest. You'll also get 100,000 silver. And you'll get a garage slot for the tank that you just got. That's if you don't have that tank. If you get a tank, and they're all premiums, by the way that you already have, well, that's when it gets real good because you can only have one of any tank. So it would be unfair to have you get this free tank out of the war chest and you get nothing for it. Well, you don't get nothing for it. You don't get to keep the tank, but you get to keep the 100,000 silver. You get to keep the garage slot and you get to keep the gold, whatever gold you got from whatever chest it was plus you get the current sales price in gold for whatever that tank sells for at the moment when you open the chest if that tank is on sale for half price which randomly does happen you'll get the half price gold refund 99% of the time it's full price so that's the best part when you get a refund free tank from your war chest because that's jackpot city so let me show you some examples there of that stuff this is the most recent one that happened to me this actually happened to me last week this is the falcon t92 right now in the private chests, and this is uh, April 2024, that this is the top prize you can get out of a private war chest. The reason it's a top prize is because I already have this tank, which you're looking at right here. And here's the thing. I played this tank, as you can see, 15,000 experience in this tank. I played this tank before. So I've had this tank for a while and then you know I don't really don't play it because I have other tanks that I like better but and you keep these tanks for this reason because I got a long haul opened it up cha-ching tank came out holy moly Falcon T92 I got a 6500 gold refund for this tank you see that's how I have over 8000 gold in my account as you, right there at the top of the screen that's from this tank so I got the 6,500 gold for this tank. I got the 100,000 silver. I got the garage slot, which I kept because it was a bonus. And I got 150 gold. So 6,500 for this tank plus 150 gold. That was 6,650 gold from one lucky long haul. This is why you do long hauls. Okay. This is the ultimate reason. Now, you're not going to get a refund tank like this very often that's okay this is you know this is the lucky lucky you know prize winning gift that you get 
Sometimes you get a regular one. Well, let's look at a regular one and see what that's like. Here we go. This was today's private chest. Shazam. Now, what you see here, I didn't get a lucky tank. Okay. However, the lowest value you can get for gold in a private chest is 150. The highest you can get in a private chest is 400. So I got the 400 gold plus a day of premium. That's as good as it gets unless you get a, a premium tank uh, car, which is 10% of the time. That's fantastic. So this is a great result today. 400 gold plus a day of premium. That is just outstanding. Now, to be honest, whenever you get a war chest, most of the time... You're going to get 150 gold and some random stuff. Vehicle booster, one or two of those, maybe a commander booster. It just depends. Maybe some silver, etc. This one was very lucky. Not as lucky as a tank card, but hey, you know, I'm not complaining. So this is the thing that made me think of making this video was to let you guys know you can do this. Now, the thing is, you can do this twice a week if you want to. And if you're smart about it, I'm going to teach you the brownie method. Now, the brownie method is really good, and the thing that makes it so freaking killer, he came up with this on his own. Other people have done the same thing, because it's fairly, fairly obvious. But he's a kid. As a kid, he figured this out on his own. And it was like, dude, that's a great plan. So here's the brownie plan. You have seven days in a week. Starts Tuesday, ends Monday. He, he did the math. He was like, okay, so there's 75 for each long haul. There's two long hauls. If you want to do two long hauls in a week, spread out over the week, all you have to do is collect 25 points a day. Successfully finish top seven in 25 matches a day, every day. After the third day, so Tuesday is day one, Wednesday is day two, Thursday is day three. Well, Thursday, you can easily, without any really hard work, collect a long haul and a random who knows what you get. And then Friday is day one, Saturday is day number two, and Sunday is day number three. By Sunday, you could collect the second one. And that's two of those done. Again, now you might get two of the lowest ones, 150 gold each. That'd be 300 gold plus whatever random other things are in there. Or you might get an uncommon one like myself with the 400 gold. Or you might get the super lucky tank prize card. Anything is possible. But because you can finish this in six days... With moderate gameplay, nothing, you're not killing yourself to do this. You don't go in there, oh, I gotta do 50 missions a day. Oh, that's terrible. It's so boring because it is kind of boring, okay? This is why it helps. If you're gonna do it, do it in something that you enjoy. I'm gonna show you some great long haul vehicles. Just give you an idea. This is not a specific recommendation or you know, a plan for yourself. Everybody's different. Do what works for you. But I'm going to give you ideas based upon how these work for me. The Thresher. This is a winning tank for me. Now, I use all premiums, and so I lose money in this tank every day that I play it. Okay, it's just nothing you can do. And I'm, I'm fine with that. I can live with that. I also use this as a commander builder. So, you can see I have a three-star commander right there. Carmilla. She, you know, this tank with her, her quick learner, and the enhanced rations, she's a 30%, 10% for, for quick learner and 10% for the rations. She's a 50% commander bonus earner. So she gets 50% bonus. Bingo. She will help me build commander points. Locust. Very, very fast tank. Matches can end quite quickly and quick and quickly in your favor if you're good at it. I'm a really good light tank player, so it's good for me. This is one of my long haul guys. 
Fury, this is a fun tank for me. I don't score uh, great, but I score good enough. You know, I might play this with with guys and still score long hauls. You know, fifty percent of the time. This is just good for goofing around. Astron Rex, another commander builder with a three star bonus commander. This is a fifty percent commander bonus tank. Thirty percent for that commander. Ten percent for quick learner and ten percent for the enhanced rations. A hundred percent bonus. Now this is tier eight. It's kind of slow. You can't do very many matches in an hour, and you'll fight nines and tens. I don't really do it very often, but sometimes I feel like it. You know, it's okay. It's like bonus for me. Vengeance, another fifty percent commander bonus tank, uh, like the Astron Rex, and also like the thirty eight H. Same thing applies. Sexton one. This is one of my main dudes. This tank, again, set up like the Thresher. 30% for the Commander, 10% for Quick Learner, 10% for the Enhanced Rations, a 50% Commander bonus every match. And as an ace artillery guy, I sometimes have unbelievable results. You know, I average about 5,000 Commander points in this tank per match. Win or, win or lose over the long haul, no pun intended. So if I play 20 matches, I'm going to average 100 grand in Commander when that's done. Maybe a little bit more if I'm on a good roll. Maybe a hair less if I'm just average. Okay. Killer for me. Not killer for everyone, but it's just absolutely killer for me. And, and I can do this all day. High tier artillery. Nah, I don't do those. Eradicator is also like the Astron Rex. Um, not my cup of tea. Good tank. Fun to play sometimes, but I can't score in this for long haul, so I don't. 38H is a great one for me for a commander bonus, but it doesn't score at all. Tier 2, it's not eligible. Tier 2, not eligible. Tier 4, Monster. This is one of my great scoring tanks. Again, Martyr 38T, Tank Destroyer. Another artillery. Doesn't score anywhere near as good as the Sexton, so I don't waste my time. A32, super fast Russian medium premium tank. Very good score for long hauls. Churchill 3, great tank. Not a great long haul score, but it can be from time to time if you have the right skill set. I am not the greatest heavy tank player in the world, so it's not my cup of tea. This is my advanced Russian artillery, tier 9. I don't do this, so it's just here. That's something I'm working on over time whenever I feel like it. And we cycle back around to the Thresher. Now I have way more tanks than this. But this is my like first you know, cut of tanks that I would be using. I can do other things like go to Cold War. In Cold War, I can do this all day like Captain America. FV-101 light tank. That is a long haul almost every game. It's that good for me. Just like the Locust. Same thing with the Armadillo. Another viciously high scoring light tank. Now there's more that I can use. Scorpion 90 is also very good. RDFLT, another light tank. There's no artillery, so I don't have that option. But light tanks, I score in light tanks in Cold War. This is me personally. You got to go with whatever works for you. Brownie is just awesome in the Forad. So that's another one that's terrific if you have that. I mean, these are all good tanks here. And there's the Forad right there. It's a killer tank for the right guy. M60AX, I'm very good in this tank, but it's not really good enough for long haul. Um, repeated. So it's just, you know, it, it depends on the person. That's all I'm going to tell you. That's the main thing. It just depends on the person. You know, the other stuff. Type 63i is another one. As a light tank, I can do fairly well in this one. Not as good as the 101 Scorpion because of durability factors. This one is less durable. So, you know, I can do okay. Uh, also, if I want to use the, the M636 Condor 
or you know some of these other like a bandit from time to time but these are just they're not as good scoring wise and that's the deal so normally speaking if i want to do cold war long hauls i'm going to come here and rake it in super nasty and i'm going to make a lot of money okay that is the deal so you got to figure out what you can score in what you can score in quickly now this one the 101 scorpion the average is five or six minutes a game it's a little bit longer than than world war ii but i make a lot of money on this tank so it just all depends what do i need you know or what are my friends doing if they're want, they want to go do something and they want me to come help them can i go run something with them that gives me a good option and a decent chance of scoring a long haul that's why I went through all these tanks. Because I don't go out there, oh, I'm going to go a long haul. I'm going to go do the rock crawler. No. But if you're, you know, one, they're working on a tier two contract or something, I'm like, oh, you know, whatever. Okay, I'll go with you. It'll be fun. We'll goof around. I might get I might get a long haul in this. So it's, it, it's an, you know, I want to choose things that will give me an option to score. But there's no, like, pressure to go and get it. So that's really, it's, it's just a mentality. So the thing is, long holes are your friend because they give you free stuff. You saw how I scored with that T-92 Falcon. You saw how I scored today with 400 gold and a day of premium, which was fantastic. So that was terrific as well. Tuesday starts a new week, new long holes. So that's the dealio. Like I said, you can do two a week. Use the brownie plan, do 25 qualifying matches. In fact, well, here's how you qualify. Go check on the challenges. Long haul. So there you go. Repeatable, one out of two. I only did one this week. No big deal. I was doing other things, working on other stuff. There was no rush. And I, had, I got my 400 gold coin. That's like three long hauls right there. Three regular 150 long hauls. It's really like four if you count the value of the day of premium, which was 250 gold. So that was fantastic. So the long haul, you check it here, and it tells you right there. You scroll down here, earn one of the following random rewards, private war chest, sergeant war chest. And every once in a while, um, you know, general's war chest. I think it's something like 85% private, 10% sergeant, and 5% general, something like that. But I, you know, I've gotten all of them. It, you know, you get what you get, and whatever happens, happens. It's a freebie. I don't really complain about whatever I get. It's like, hey, whatever, dude. I go, okay. I get a, I get a long haul. I'm thinking, I'm getting 150 for that private. If I get a sergeant, I'll get 275, and I'm good with that. And if I get a general, I'm gonna get 425, and I'm good with that. If I get any more than that, super awesome. Just that simple. So that covers the way the long hauls operate. And I think that got everything that you need to know so that you can do long hauls. But if you got any questions, by all means, leave a question and I'll be happy to answer it for you because it's super easy to do if you do the right things for you. If you're a medium tank player, play medium tanks. Now, the thing is, Unless you're really, really good, you don't want to go high. Because here's the secret. The locust rules for me as one of the options because it's a tier three. And this tank makes money and the matches end fast three to four minutes usually and the real you know and that's the thing you can do now there's other ones i can use as well panzer 1c for example this for people who don't have premium tanks that's a great thinking i, I had to think about that i wasn't even thinking about this let's look at for example let's all right here we go these are tier three tanks that are not premium So let's go check this out. 
M2 medium. Eh, yeah, decent. The sniper is good. Artillery. There's the Panzer 1C. This is the same thing, more or less, as the Locust, but not premium. Free tank. German Vesp artillery. UE57 French sniper tank. Lorraine artillery French. SU26 Russian artillery. M3GFT Chinese tier 3 super fast sniper tank. Very good if you're a sniper guy. Etc. Etc. You can play any of these. The Thresher again. That is a mercenary tank. But these are non-premiums. If you don't have premium tanks, these are some good selections for you, potentially. Now, one of the things you don't see in here is a Japanese Type 91 heavy tank. It's hard to get in matches in that tank. You can try it and see if you have luck. But, you know, the matches on matchups on that tank dry up quickly. Just giving you the heads up. So, it's not something people normally will run. But you could run it. But you're going to have some problems sometimes. Don't try to make this complicated. Make it as simple as possible. It's like, hey, grab a tank that's, you know, whatever regular tank, M2 medium. Go out there, you know, if you're a medium guy, play this and go, wow, that wasn't that great. Okay, well, it's going to depend. And you're like, well, you know, tier three isn't, I don't have any great tier three Tech tree tanks, well, here's tier fours, just to give you an idea. M5 Stewart. These are all tanks you get for free from the tech tree at the top of the screen where it says tanks. And these are all, these are Americans here. HMC M8, British Artillery, Panzer 3J. This is an absolute killer tank for long hauls. If you're a medium player, this is one of the top long haul scorers there is. Fast reliable and durable you can't go wrong now i'm a sniper guy as well so i'll use these either the martyr or the hetzer martyr is really my number one but i like to play hetzer too from time to time french artillery russian artillery mercenary contract needle so you can do whatever floats your boat these are just you know again ideas what you might want to consider doing your long hauls if you have a question, this is the thing. Ask me the question. If you don't know, no one's going to look at you and go, he's an idiot. Any question you don't know, ask, and you're going to get the answer. The people around here are, are really cool. And they'll be, usually they beat me to the punch and answer the questions for you. But I will answer the question if I see it eventually. You know, usually the same day. I check those every day. So it's one of those things. You can have a lot of fun and cash long hauls if you're interested. If you're not, don't worry about it. So whatever floats your boat. But anyway, that is what I have for you. And I thought that would help you, especially if you've never had it explained. You know, all of my dudes, Hayden and Brownie, they're kids. They do it all the time. Brown, uh, Bernie, Fish, Wrong Way myself and everybody else basically do long hauls that you never know you might get lucky dude so that is it i hope this helped you out i hope you learned something it would be helpful again if you could leave a like it would be helpful if you could tell your friends that way they could learn about this stuff if they don't know it and maybe they'll leave a like or a subscribe so Look forward to seeing you guys again, hopefully real soon. Whenever you show up, I'll be here with something good to, to give you, that's for sure. So look forward to seeing you then. See you later.